All right. Well, thank you. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Reactive Summit 2022. It's great to be back out live in the world again. Uh, as as uh, she said, I'm Hugh McKee. I'm a developer advocate at Lightband and co-chair co of the, the Reactive Summit. And we're delighted to have you here today. We've, um, we've got a great, uh, incredible uh, lineup for you planned for today. There's some great talks. And um, I think we're going to have a range. You know, some people probably been in the reactive space for a while, but some people might be newcomers. But it's all it's all a, an opportunity for you, to, you guys to learn and take some things away, and uh, also you know connect up with the other people. It, this is one of the great things about being back out uh, in live conferences again. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors, especially Lightband, the, the platinum sponsors, Lightband and Yopworks. And just a few housekeeping reminders. Um, please remember uh, that uh, we have an event code at the, the conference that everyone has agreed to and will be enforcing. In short, basically, it's everyone should feel welcome and included. And uh, please treat everyone with respect and professionalism. Any concerns, go to the, the um, registration desk, and the, the, the event team will help you out. And finally, um, the conference has asked that we wear masks while we're uh, not talking and, not, and when you're and not eating or drinking. So um, just the, the masks are required at the conference. So before I introduce the first speaker, the keynote speaker, I wanted to just spend a few minutes talking about uh, reactive and a little bit about what it means to me, but I think a lot about what it means to you. And, React has been kind of interesting. You know, Jonas Spinera, who's one of our keynote speakers, will be talking in a little bit. But Jonas and some others put together what was called the Reactive Manifesto back around 2013. And in the Reactive Manifesto, it really focused on uh, what we now kind of cl uh, clarify as reactive systems. But in the years since then, Reactive really kind of took off, but it took off in the reactive programming space, which was great because it was a new style of programming that was much more efficient use of system resources, you know, infrastructure resources, things like that. But in my heart, what attracted me, I've been with Lightbend for about six years now. And before I came to Lightbend, I was in enterprise IT at Hewlett Packard. And the bane of my existence, I was a developer and architect, but we had these things when we had production outages, we called them escalations. And you know, these systems ran 24-7, and of course, the odds are that the system's going to go down when you're not working, like on a weekend. And so this is a selfish motivation why I really kind of became interested in reactive systems, because in a way, it was like I was on these, you know, like marathon calls. I think many of you have been here, right? You have a production system. It goes down. It's on a weekend. you got to get on the phone. You got to leave your family, so your family's not happy with you. Your management's not happy with you. Your customers are not happy with you. So there's this incredible pressure to get the system back on. And you could be on these calls for hours, you know, like overnight type of thing, trying to resurrect and get the system back online. And I'd be on these calls and it's like, I'm vowing, I never want, you know, never, I'd never want to let this happen again. How can I do this? How can I get out of this situation? So when I saw the Reactive Manifesto, I think I saw it around 2014 time frame. It's like, okay, these guys are kind of speaking my language. And with the Reactive Systems, it's, there's really kind of four aspects of it that are the key to it. And they're kind of pretty intuitive. It, it, uh, initially kind of obvious, but there's a lot of depth to them, I think. So the first one is you want to build a system that's always responsive. So it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. But by always responsive, it means the users always, you know, every time they want to use the system, it's, it's, it's a 24 hours, you know, 24 seven system, it's available to them. But the, in order to do that, there's kind of two key other characteristics of a reactive system. One is that the system's always responsive under load. So the system can scale. So it can scale up when the load goes up and the system can scale down, which is nice. A nice feature if you can scale up, you, you can scale down. So the nice thing about being able to scale up, of course, you can handle the spikes in traffic. If you can scale down, you can save money, which could be big money. 
um, just real quick, I, at HP, we had like, I think there were like 50,000 servers. This was around the 2010, 20, you know, early 2010s. And the, the overall utilization of the servers were around 10%. Drove the IT management nuts. The, you know, the, all this lovely hardware, and we're using 10% of it. Because they were over-provisioned to handle the spikes. So if you could scale down, you could save a ton of money. But the more interesting other characteristic of a reactive system is the system's responsive when things fail. And that's the fun part, I think. That's the real challenge. How do you build systems that are going to keep running when things break? And this is where the fourth and final characteristic of a reactive system comes in, which is messaging. And really, if when you read the, the manifesto, it talks about asynchronous messaging. But really what's going on there is it's enabling loose coupling of components. And this is a key ingredient of uh, resiliency. If you can build a system where component A is not dependent on component B, because when component B goes down, component A doesn't care, then you're in a good place. Right? Your, your system is more resilient. So this whole loose coupling, which we talk about a lot with microservices, for example, this is the strategy and the motivation. But the, 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 the guilty motivation is that I don't want to get those phone calls in the middle of the night on the weekend when I'm with my family. And I don't want to be on, the, on those high pressure calls anymore. The, the most wonderful thing is when you build a system and you, um, something crashes and the system keeps running, of course it has to be fixed, but we're not down. That's a beautiful place to be. I remember the first time we showed our management an ACA system where we could kill nodes and the application kept running. They, were like, they would sit there almost like little kids in glee. Oh, that's so wonderful. They want to go and brag to their other managers. Say, look, my applications can have pieces go down and it still runs. That's where you want to be. This is what Reactive is about. So I think it's going to be interesting. As you go through the talks today, it'll be all over the map in terms of where things fall on the spectrum of Reactive, Reactive programming, Reactive systems. But um, a lot of it's motivated by the, the, these, these fundamental characteristics. And it's, it's a deep and fascinating area, and, and I, I really hope you enjoy the, the conference. So with that, I want to introduce our first keynote speaker, Mary Grigelski. Mary is a Java champion and a passionate streaming developer advocate at Datastax. Uh, Mary and I run into each other at conferences all over the place. She's amazing, though, because um, she transitioned from a Unix C programmer in 2000 to Java and never looked back. She's um, considered herself a polygot and loves to continue learning. But I think the big thing, Mary is a force, especially in the Chicago area, with um, promoting conferences and uh, getting things going. And, and, and you were, became a Java, Java champion last year, right? So we're very delighted to have Mary be with us this morning. Welcome, Mary.